ओम अज्ञानति मिरांधस्य ज्ञानंजन शलाखया चक्षुरोन्मिल तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थात भूतले स्वयं रूप कदाम ददा स्वदाति वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्री उता पद कमल श्री गुरोन्वैष्णवाम सागर जात सह गण रघुनाता तम सजीव साइत सवधूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पदा सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्वता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी श्री राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुस्तुते देवी प्रणमा हरिप्रि नमो विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामीने नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत कदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे गुरवे गौरचंद्रा राधिकाए तदाल कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताय तद्भक्ताय नमो नम आनंदलीलामय विग्रहाय हेमाव दिव्य छवि सुंदराय तस्म महाप्रेम रस प्रदाय श्री चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते निनंद महम नवमी सर्वानंद कलम परम हरिनाम प्रदम देव अवधूत शिरोमणि श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु की जय श्री नित्यानंद राम की जय थैंक यू रेड बोटिस फॉर वंस अगेन वेरी काइंडली जॉइनिंग फॉर द वेन्सडे संग टू हियर एंड चैंट अबाउट श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु एंड ऑफ कोर्स श्री कृष्ण वेन एवर वी स्पीक अवर चैतन्य महाप्रभु we naturally also glorify krishna and whenever we speak about krishna we also naturally glorify shri chaitanya mahaprabhu so this evening we will take a verse from the shri chaitanya charitamrut madhya leela chapter 10 text 119 this is a very beautiful verse because we'll f- see that lot of words are being repeated primarily there's one word that gets repeated and we will see that during the discussion So this is Chaitanya Charitamrit, Madhya Lila, Chapter Ten, Text One Hundred and Nineteen. This follows the same meter as the Sad Goswami Ashtakam that we sing. So let us chant the words. Hello, Dhuni Ta Khe Daya Visha Daya, Pron Mila Da Mo Daya, Shamya Chastra Viva Daya Rasa Daya. शाश्वत्तिविनोदयाशदया रसदया 
शश्वक्ति विनोदया समदया माधुर्यमर्यादया श्री चैतन्य दया निधे कवदया भूयादया ट्रांसलेशन ओ ओशन ऑफ मर्सी श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु लेट देर बी एन अवेकनिंग ऑफ योर ऑस्पिशियस मर्सी which easily drives away all kinds of material lamentation by making everything pure and blissful indeed your mercy awakens transcendental bliss and covers all material pleasures by your auspicious mercy quarrels and disagreements arising among different scriptures are vanquished your auspicious mercy pours forth transcendental mellows and thus causes the heart to jubilate your mercy which is full of joy always stimulates devotional service and glorifies conjugal love of god may transcendental bliss be awakened within my heart by your causeless mercy so if we see there is one word that is constantly repeated which is daya or mercy how many times it's being repeated helo dhuni takhe daya this is one vishadaya second pronmila damodaya third samya chastra vivadaya fourth rasadaya fifth chittarpiton madaya sixth shashvat bhakti vinodaya seventh sa madaya eighth madhurya maryadaya nine shri chaitanya daya ten nidhe tava daya eleven bhuyad amon do daya that is eleven 11 times this word daya has been used here often times in english language we see that when poets are composing something they will not use the same word again and again because it is considered repetition and if the same word is used again and again it shows that probably the poet or the author is not proficient in the language and that's why he is using the same word again and again to make his point but here in chaitanya charitamrit we see actually the origin for this verse is chaitanya chandrodaya natak in chaitanya chandrodaya natak this verse has been quoted and kaviraj goswami takes it from there and we will find many verses of chaitanya charitamrit kaviraj goswami takes it from different scriptures and he puts that in chaitanya charitamrit so this word daya has been used 11 times which means compassion or mercy chaitanya mahaprabhu's characteristics are defined 10 characteristics of gauranga mahaprabhu are defined in this in this verse of course in the interest of time we will not be able to go through all of them but we'll at least try to go through some of them in our limited time shila prabhupada writes a purport to this so let us also read the purport what shila prabhupada is saying in fact chaitanya charitamrit we see in bhagavatam in many of the verses almost all of the verses prabhupada writes a purport but in chaitanya charitamrit prabhupada writes purports on not all the verses selected verses this important verse shri chaitanya chandrodaya natak chapter 8 text 10 specifically describes the lord's causeless mercy shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur explains that shri chaitanya mahaprabhu is the most magnanimous personality of godhead distributes his causeless mercy in three ways to the conditioned soul every living entity is morose in the material world because he is always in want he undergoes a great struggle for existence and tries to minimize his miserable condition by squeezing the utmost pleasure out of this world but the living entity is never successful in this endeavor while in a miserable condition a person sometimes seeks the favor of the supreme personality of godhead but this is very different for materialistic people to obtain however when one becomes krishna conscious by the grace of the lord the fragrance of the lotus feet of the lord expands and in this way a materialist may gain freedom from his miseries actually his mind is cleansed by his transcendental connection with the lotus feet of the lord at such a time one is enlightened by the loving service of the lord there are many different kinds of scriptures and by reading them one often becomes puzzled 
but when one receives the mercy of the Lord, his confusion is mitigated. Not only are scriptural disparities resolved, but a kind of transcendental bliss is awakened. And in this way, one is fully satisfied. The transcendental loving service of the Lord constantly engages the conditioned soul in serving the Lord's lotus feet. Through such fortunate engagement, one's transcendental love for Lord Krishna is increased. One's position is thus completely purified and one is filled with transcendental bliss accompanied by the spirit soul's jubilation. Thus the transcendental causeless mercy of Lord Krishna is manifested in the heart of a devotee. At such a time, material needs no longer exist. The lamentation that invariably accompanies material desires also vanishes. By the grace of the Lord, one is elevated to the transcendental position and then the transcendental mellows of the spiritual world are manifested in him. One's devotional service then becomes firm and one engages in the Lord's transcendental loving service with great determination. All these combine to fully awaken the Lord's, awaken the devotee's heart with love for Krishna. In the beginning, a conditioned soul is bereft of Krishna consciousness and is always morose in his material activities. Later, by associating with a pure devotee, one becomes inquisitive to know the absolute truth. In this way, one begins to engage in transcendental service of the Lord. Next, by the Lord's grace, all misconceptions are vanquished and the heart is cleansed of all material dirt. It is only then that the pleasure of transcendental bliss is awakened. By the Lord's mercy, one is completely convinced of the value of devotional service. When one can see the pastimes of the Lord everywhere, he is firmly situated in transcendental bliss. Such a devotee is relieved of all kinds of material desires and he preaches the glories of the Lord all over the world. These Krishna conscious activities separate him from material activities and the desire for liberation because at every step, the devotee feels himself connected with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although such a devotee may sometimes be involved in household life, he is untouched by material existence due to his constant engagement in devotional service. Thus, everyone is advised to take shelter of devotional service to become happy and liberated. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai. So we find in this verse, First of all, who is chanting this verse? It is Swarup Damodar Goswami who is chanting this verse. When is Swarup Damodar Goswami chanting this verse? Swarup Damodar Goswami, when he meets Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for the very first time at Jagannath Puri, this verse manifested from his lotus lips. The first words that Swarup Damodar Goswami chanted when he saw Gauranga Mahaprabhu face to face, the first words that Lalita Saki chants when she sees Radharani in Gauralila is this verse. So till the time we don't know who is chanting it, uh, we may or may not appreciate it. And look at how beautifully this verse is, has been constructed. We oftentimes say, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is most merciful. How merciful? Oh, the word Daya has been used 11 times in one verse. And we will not find any other verse that shows the compassionate nature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu like this verse. So there are 10 characteristics of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that have that are described here. First, Helo Dhunita Khe Daya. This is the first characteristic or the first adjective for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. First glorification of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Helo Dhunita. So it is Hela Udhunita, which in Sanskrit becomes Helo Dhunita. Helo Dhunita Khe Daya. What does this mean? As Prabhupada is explaining the word to word, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is such a personality. When we speak about him, material lamentation goes away. Bhakti Rutpadhyate Pumsam Shoka Moha Bhaya Pahad. When someone worships Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what happens? One thing rises in the heart and three things drop. Bhakti Rutpadhyate Pumsam. Bhakti rises in the heart. And what are the three things that fall? Shoka. Moha, bhaya pahad. Shoka, which means lamentation. Moha, illusion. And bhaya, which we always have. 
bhaya is something which jeevas are always plagued with whether they are in india whether they are in america whether wherever they are even the demigods are not free from this bhaya best example we see is indra indra is always having this fear if prithu maharaj finishes his 100 sacrifice then prithu maharaj will become the next indra and i am kicked out hiranyakashipu fear so fear is something that is constantly there hmm? bhaktir utpadyate pumsam shoka moha bhaya pahad by worshiping chaitanya mahaprabhu bhakti rises in the heart and these three things fall shoka moha bhaya and in those three also shokadev goswami first puts shoka that is lamentation here also swarup damodar goswami first puts lamentation because lamentation is something that it is always there in the head always chaitanya mahaprabhu has been glorified kaviraj goswami he very beautifully says chaitanya leela amrita pur krishn leela sukarpur dui mili hoe so madhurya sadhu guru prasade yaar ye aswade se jane madhurya prachurya chaitanya leela amrutapur krishna leela sukarpur how is chaitanya mahaprabhu's past times oh it is like condensed milk and krishna leela sukarpur it's like camphor what happens when you put camphor in milk dui mili hoe so madhurya oh when these two condensed milk like gaura leela and camphor like krishna leela come together hoe so madhurya the beverage that is formed is ah oh, it's very sweet very sweet for the ear very sweet for the heart very sweet for the mind but sadhu guru prasade yaar ye aswade but only when sadhu and guru is satisfied sadhu guru prasade yaar je aswade when sadhu and guru are satisfied with our devotional service se jane madhurya prachur these sadhus have tasted the nectar of krishna leela they have tasted the nectar of gaura leela and when they are satisfied with our bhajan when they are satisfied with our devotion service then this condensed milk and camphor this beverage shri guru places in our hand for the disciple to drink sadhu guru prasade yaar ajay aswade krishna leela is very sweet and so is gaura leela and krishna leela is sweet because krishna is very sweet and gaura leela is sweet because gauranga mahaprabhu is sweet krishna is very beautiful and likewise gauranga mahaprabhu is very very beautiful but sometimes a question arises well prabhu ji in iskon we always say krishna is very beautiful gauranga mahaprabhu is very beautiful that is okay but if krishna is actually so beautiful why are in the demons getting attracted Agasur is coming, Kaliya is coming. Well, Kamsa is there. Shakata sur, Aga baka shakata ka. Agasur, baka sur, shakata sur, Aga baka shakata ka. It's almost like a rap. You see, youth are always into rap. This rap, that rap. Krishna consciousness also has rap. Aga baka shakata ka. Hmm? So well, if Krishna is actually that beautiful, why are the demons getting attracted? Well, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna very beautifully says, "Naham prakash." सर्वस्व योग माया समावृत ई से इज दट आई एम नॉट मैनिफेस्ट टू एवरी वन योग माया समावृत योग माया कवर्स मी एंड जीव गोस्वामी कॉमेंट्स ऑन दिस इन इज कृष्ण संदर्भशील जीव गोस्वामी राइट्स दैट ही गिव्स एन एक्साम्पल टू इलेस्ट्रेट दिस पॉइंट एस टू वाई द डीमेंस आर नॉट गेटिंग अट्रैक्टेड टू कृष्ण ब्यूटी ही गिव्स द एक्साम्पल ऑफ अ स्नेक अ स्नेक हैज अ टेंडेंसी ऑफ शेडिंग इट्स डेड स्किन the dead skin that a snake has it sheds and while it is shedding a new skin has already formed inside so someone apparently from outside who sees a dead skin will think oh this is the actual snake but an intelligent person will understand wait a minute this is not the actual snake the this is just a covering the real snake is there inside this is just an outer covering likewise 
Jiva Goswami says, whenever demons come, Mahamaya or Krishna's Yoga Maya potency, so to say, puts a covering, a transcendental covering over Krishna's body. So when the demons are coming, they are just seeing the covering, which is Jiva Goswami says, like the dead skin of a snake. But that is not Krishna. Just like that is not snake, that is not Krishna. But devotees who are performing Krishna consciousness will understand that just like the dead skin is not snake, likewise this outer covering that is there is not the actual Krishna. This is not the actual Krishna. Actual Krishna has been hidden behind. And Krishna confirms this. Naham Prakasha Sarvasva. I don't give myself so easily. I am not so cheap. Sripad Aindra Prabhu would say, Krishna is not so cheap. Krishna demands surrender. Krishna is like an IT corporate boss. He will give promotion only when you perform. Likewise, Krishna, Sarva Dharman Parityaji, you perform, you fully surrender, oh, then you get the result. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not like that. When Krishna comes down, he kills so many demons. But whom did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu kill? No one. Not even one example of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu killing anyone. But the only thing Mahaprabhu kills is the anarthas in the heart. Gauranga Nityananda Nahi Kare Aisama Bichar Namalai Premadai Bahe Ashrudar Gauranga Nityananda Nahi Kare Aisama Bichar Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Nityananda Prabhu don't consider any offenses. Namalai, they chant the holy name and they induce us also to chant the holy name. Premadai, by chanting the holy name, they give Prem. Bahe Ashrudar. And by doing this, tears are flowing from their ear, from their eyes. Gauranga Nityananda Nahikare Sabhabichar Namalaye Premadaye Bahe Ashrudar. So Krishna is killing demons, but Mahaprabhu is not killing anyone. Mahaprabhu is indeed Daya. We are just focusing on this word Daya at this point. He is indeed compassionate because he doesn't kill anyone. Not even one example. Kaviraj Goswami says, Chaitanya Leela Amrita Sar Tara Shata Shata Dhar Dasha Dike Vaheja Hoyte Se Chaitanya Leela Hoy Sarovara Akshay Manohamsa Charahatahate Kaviraj Goswami is saying, how is Chaitanya Leela and what is Krishna Leela? He says, Chaitanya Leela Amrita Sar Tarashata Shatadhar. Chaitanya Leela, or in fact, Krishna Leela. Krishna Leela Amrita Sar. Krishna Leela is Amrita Sar. It's the essence of all nectar. But Tarashata Shatadhar, this Krishna Leela is such, it is flowing in hundreds of directions. There are so many branches. And we see this practically. The version of a pastime that we hear in ISKCON will be very different from the version that we hear somewhere else in Vrindavan. And the version that we hear in Vrindavan may be very different from the version that we hear somewhere else. So there are various branches. Hmm? Not that what we say is only right. Krishna performs his pastimes in different, different kalpas in different, different ways. So Krishna Leela Amrita Sar Tara Shato Shato Dhar streams are going in hundreds and different direction. Dasha dike vahe ja hoite. But say Chaitanya Leela hoi Manohara Akshay. But what is Chaitanya Leela? This Chaitanya Leela is such Manohamsa that my dear Lord, this Chaitanya Leela is the reservoir. It's like the lake. Yes, Krishna Leela has different, different streams. But where are the streams coming from? The streams are coming from Gaura Leela. Gaura Leela is like the transcendental lake that is overflowing. And Kaviraj Goswami is saying, Manohamsa Charatahate. My dear Lord, may my mind become like a swan and may it swim in this ocean or this lake, transcendental reservoir, transcendental lake of Gaura Leela. Mano Hamsa, which means Hamsa is also pure. It is white. So may my mind become pure like that of the swan, Parama Hamsa, and may it swim in this ocean of Gaura Leela. So who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He is Daya. 11 times this word has been used here. And the first 
phrase that Surup Damodar Goswami is using is Helo Nudita Khedaya. He's saying, Who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He removes our lamentation. The material lamentation that is there, Gauranga Mahaprabhu removes it. And we find so many examples to illustrate. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there at Jagannath Puri, he was invited by Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. We see Sarvabhama Bhattacharya earlier was not Mahaprabhu's devotee. But after the seven days battle that went on, he finally surrendered. When Sarvabhama Bhattacharya asked him, Hey Baba, are you understanding what I am saying? Last seven days you are just sitting, you are not saying anything. Are you really understanding what I am saying? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, what has to be understood that I'm understanding. But what you are trying to explain that I'm not able to understand. What conclusions that you are giving that is not going in my head. So Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, after transformation, he very beautifully glorifies Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Satatam janata bhava tapaharam. In his Sachi Sutashtakam, he writes, who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Satatam janata bhava tapaharam. He removes the tapa, janata of the people, tapaharam. The lamentation, the anxiety, the suffering that is there. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu removes all of that. And for those who have done Bhakti Shastri, this is the quality of Bhakti. Klesha Agni. For those who have studied Bhakti Shastri and given exam, that is also important. Because if there is no exam, our memory is very volatile. It just evaporates everything. Kleshagni, one of the qualities Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrachandu explains is the material lamentations or the miseries that are there, it gets eradicated. And Swarup Damodar Goswami uses that phrase. So when Mahaprabhu was there at Jagannath Puri, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya called Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for Prasad. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu agreed. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to his house to have Prasad. And, but Sarvabhama Bhattacharya was standing outside. Like Jay and Vijay, he was standing outside. Not allowing anyone to go inside. Why? Because he had a son-in-law by the name Amoga. And now he knew the nature of Amoga. Amoga was such a personality. He could find faults even in those places where a person apparently has no faults. Radharani's in-laws. Srimati hmm? Radharani has three places. Appears in Raval, performs pastimes in Varsanadham, and then after marriage goes to Yavat. Hmm? This is why Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he writes, that my dear Lord, if given a choice, I want to appear in Varsana because that is where when she was small, she was there. But after my marriage, I want to go to Yavat. So he is speaking from his Nitya Leela Swaroop. Hmm? pure. Janamalo elo yavata vivaha hobe. That my dear Lord, Brishabhanu pure janamalo elo. In my next life, which means not in this world, in the spiritual world, in his Manjari Swaru, in his female form, he's saying, Brishabhanu pure janamalo elo. I want to take birth in Brishabhanu pur because Radharani is there. But when she is getting married and going to Yavat, I also want to get married and go to Yavat. Wherever Radharani is there, we will be there. Our Lord is Srimati Radharani. In fact, for Gaudias, it is not even Krishna. It is Srimati Radharani. Our, our Aryadhyatham, our Praneshwari, our Yuteshwari, our Sarveshwari, our Vrindavaneshwari is Srimati Radharani. Gaudias, as Saraswati Chakur has explained, we are followers of Srimati Radharani. And because Krishna is running around Srimati Radharani to get her attention, we give respect to Krishna also. But our everything is Srimati Radharani. So Srimati Radharani's in-laws are Jatila and Kutila. Jatila, Jata, basically means uh, matted locks. You see, sometimes if you go uh, in the Himalayas, you may find sadhus. They have matted locks, Jata. In our ISKCON, we see Dina Bandhu Prabhu, matted locks. Madhav Prabhu, matted locks. That is Jata. Sanskrit is called as Jata. So she is called Jatila. Why? Because even the simplest of the simplest topics, she has the ability to uh, twist and turn. Radharani may be going, 
somewhere to Surya Kund, maybe just to fetch water. And she will say, oh, why is Radharani going at this time? Normally she goes in the afternoon. Why in the morning? Oh, is Krishna coming there? What is Krishna doing there? Krishna may not even be in the picture. Radharani may sincerely just be going to fetch water. But she has the ability to, my goodness, twist and turn, simplest of the simplest topics. So she is called Jatila. And the sister-in-law is called as Kutila. Why? Because if you see, if you have a wall, and if that wall has one small crack, and if there is an ant, the ant will leave the whole wall and just look for that small crack. If you give the ant a Buckingham Palace, he will lose, he will forget the whole Buckingham Palace and he will just look for that one crack in that Buckingham Palace. So her, she is called as Kutila because Radharani is an ocean of good qualities. But even in the ocean of good qualities, she find, tries to find faults. Radharani has no faults. She is a dosha. She has no faults. But Kutila, her nature is she will find faults. So Jatila and Kutila are two personalities who are squeezing Radharani from both sides and our poor Srimati Radharani is waiting for an opportunity when she can sneak out and go and meet Shama Sundar, Vrindavan Bihari Shri Krishna. So likewise, just like Jatila and Kutila find faults, Amoga was such a personality, he would find faults. And Sarvabhava Bhattacharya knew that. So he was standing outside so that the son-in-law should not go inside. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inside was having prasad. And somehow it so happened that when Sarva Bhama Bhattacharya had to go inside to serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to attend to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, at that time Amoga came inside the room. And Amoga came inside. He saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, Chaitanya Chaitanya explains, he was having mountains and mountains of rice and golden colored ghee was flowing. I am glad we didn't discuss this yesterday because yesterday was Ekpadashi. Chaitanya Chaitanya beautifully describes that Mahaprabhu was having an elaborate feast with, of course, Shinityananda Prabhu. And Amoga came inside and he saw the whole scene and he looked at Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and said, Hey, chi, 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 Sanyasi, Sanyasi should Jivha Vegam. Rupa Goswami saying Jivha Vegam. And Sanyasi is eating, hey, chi, 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 chi. Sanyasi should not eat so much. Sanyasi should eat only very little. And Mahaprabhu didn't say anything. Mahaprabhu just smiled. Sarvabhama Bhattacharya got very angry. He took a stick and started running behind Amoga. Exactly in Krishna Leela, you find Maya is taking a stick and running behind Lala. In Braj, they don't say Krishna as such. We say, they say Lala. For boys, it is Lala and for girls, it is Lali. So Maya is running behind Lala. And likewise, here Sarvabhama Patachari is running behind his own son-in-law, that is Amoga. But somehow he just ran away. And when Sarvabhama Patachari came back to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he fell at his feet and said, My dear Lord, please forgive him. He doesn't, he doesn't realize. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not even consider it as an offense. Eventually, the next day the news came that Amoga was struck with Cholera. Hmm. Prabhupada explains. Prabhupada uses a Sanskrit term which Prabhupada says translates to the present day cholera. And we are talking about 500 years in the past. There were uh, no hospitals. Hmm. No doctors. Nothing. So he was struck with cholera and days were numbered. He was breathing heavily. When the news came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left everything and came towards Amoga. And Amoga had this burning lamentation. Why did I criticize Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Because it was very evident that it is only after criticizing Gauranga Mahaprabhu that he was struck with this disease. He was burning in his heart. Why did I criticize Gauranga Mahaprabhu? This lamentation was just killing him inside. You see, sometimes guilt is such a thing it just kills us till the time we don't go and probably seek forgiveness from another devotee or whatever it is. Till the time we don't open our heart, it just kills us. Amoga was burning in lamentation. 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and said, Amoga, the heart is a place where Krishna resides. But how is it that from where did you get so much envy and jealousy and pride? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took his hand and placed it in the heart of Amoga. And all the envy, all the distress, all the lamentation that Amoga had was gone in one second. So much so that the cholera, which probably even present day doctors cannot treat in one day, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu treated that in one nanosecond. This is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is called Chaitanya Vaidya Mashraya. Vaigunya Kita Kalitam Paishunya Vruna Piditam Dainyarnave Nivagnoham Chaitanya Vaidya Mashraya. We take shelter of the ultimate doctor, Gauranga Mahaprabhu. Even the present day doctors with MBBS and this and that, studying in the biggest medical schools, may not be able to treat cholera even in a day, probably. And Mahaprabhu did that in one second by just placing his hand. So the lamentation of Amoga was completely taken away by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Another example, Vasudev was one such associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who was a Brahmana. And Vasudev had leprosy all over his body. So much so that in his open wounds, worms would uh, feast. And when the worms would fall down to the ground, he was so compassionate. We are talking about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu being daya, merciful or compassionate. His associates are more compassionate. He would pick up the worms and he would place it back. Because if they fall down, bichari kya khayenge? So you better stay in my hand or the body or whatever. So when he got to know that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is at Kurma Kshetra in the house of Kurma Brahman, he left everything and went to the house of Kurma Brahman. But when he reached Kurma Kshetra, when he reached Kurma Brahman, alas, he got to know Mahaprabhu has already left. Mahaprabhu has already left that place. And imagine those days you don't have um, flights. There's no Alaska. Uh, you don't have any of these flights. You don't have frontier. You don't have spirit. Uh, spirit spiritual airlines. Spirit. Uh, you don't have any of these airlines that you can take to go from one place to another. Not even proper trains. We're talking 500 years back. So they would walk. And by the time he reached, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had left. Chaitanya Chaitanya explains, Vasudev fell down to the ground in tears. Where is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Mm -hmm. We have not seen Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for such a long time for lifetimes and millenniums together. But somehow that burning desire is still not coming in the heart. Bhaktivinoda mm -hmm. Chakur, he says, Gopina Ami ki doshe doshe Gopinath Ami ki doshe doshe Asura Sakala Paino Charana Binoda Jhakila Boshi. In the Gopinath Mamani Vedana Shunu song, Bhaktivana Thakur writes, Ami ki doshe doshe. Hey Prabhu, what is my fault? Bhaktivana Thakur is saying, My dear Lord, what is my fault? If you tell me what my fault is, at least I will understand. But my dear Lord, I don't even know what is my fault. Why I am separated from you for lifetimes and lifetimes together. And I have no idea when I will again get you. But Asura Sakana Paino Charana Binodatha Keloboshi. My dear Lord, demons are coming to Vrindavan and you are giving your lotus feet to them. And here I am chanting your holy name, associating with devotees, going to Sunday feast, eating your prasadam, getting initiated, but still you are not giving me darshan. My dear Lord, what logic is this? They are not doing anything. They are not doing any tapasya. But you are still giving your lotus feet. My dear Lord, what is my fault? Gaur Govinda Maharaj would say the only price to get Krishna is tears. That's the salary that Krishna demands. Hmm? Krishna says, Patram Pushpam Phalam Toyam. Vishwana Chakravati translates Toyam as tears. 
This is the toyam that Krishna is asking for. The external toyam is water, but this is the ultimate form of toyam tears. And here was Vasudev crying that Chaitanya Kothai, Jadi Gaur na hoito, Tabeki hoito, Kemone Dharitam de Radhara Mahima, Prema Rasasima, Jagata Janateke. If not for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there would be no Krishna conscious moment. If not for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you and I would not be here speaking about Krishna consciousness. If not for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, no Radharani. If not for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, no Vrindavan Dham. If not for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, no Kartik Yatras. If not for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, no Prashadam during Sunday feast because we would have been materialist eating from restaurants and doing God knows what. If not for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what would we have done? Vasudeva was crying here. And when Mahaprabhu got to know, Mahaprabhu had already left Kurumakshetra, he still came back just to meet this one devotee, Vasudeva Vipra. And Mahaprabhu came and embraced him because he was having this lamentation that Mahaprabhu is going and meeting everyone, but not meeting me. I'm coming from such a long distance. He's not meeting me. Mahaprabhu understood that. And to drive away his lamentation and distress, Mahaprabhu again comes back and goes and embraces Vasudev. And just like in the previous example, when Mahaprabhu touches Amoga, cholera is gone. And here Mahaprabhu embraces Vasudev and all the leprosy of Vasudev is gone in one fraction of a second. When Vasudev sees his own body, he tells Satan Mahaprabhu, my dear Lord, even sinful people don't come close to me because the order is so bad. Bodily order is so bad. Even sinful people don't come. And here you are, your Namo Mahavadanyaya. Uh, you're the most magnanimous. You are the most merciful. And indeed, you are Dayanidhi. You are an ocean of mercy, my dear Lord. You are the most compassionate to come and embrace me. It's very easy to embrace someone whose body is perfectly fine. But to embrace someone who has leprosy, knowing well, very well for the fact that it is contagious. Only Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could do it. Mahaprabhu embraces and his, his leprosy is gone completely. Another example of Mahaprabhu driving away material lamentation. Ramachandra Puri. Just like his name has Puri. His pastime is also connected to Prashadam. Ramachandra Puri was also very critical of Gauranga Mahaprabhu. When Mahaprabhu was in Jagannath Puri and was inside his room, there were ants that were crawling outside. And Ramachandra Puri saw that and said, Oh, ants? Which means inside Mahaprabhu is eating sweets. Because ants come where there are sweets. Now Mahaprabhu is not eating sweets inside. Ants can come for many various other reasons also. So Ramachandra Puri saw this and said, Oh, outside he is speaking Jiva Vegam. Vacho Vega, Manasa Krodha Vega, etc. Inside closed doors when no one is seeing, he is eating sweets. He was very critical, very envious. And eventually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu forgives even Ramchandra Puri. Ramchandra Puri was in fact so critical. I remember in one of the classes we discussed about Ramchandra Puri here in, uh, in Iskan Burgan. He was so critical, he did not even spare his own Guru Maharaj. He criticized his own Guru Maharaj. This is height of criticism. When his Guru Maharaj was leaving this world, Ramchandra Puri criticized him. But even to such a person, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because he wanted to transform, the desire of transformation was there. The lamentation, the burning guilt that was there in his heart, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu completely drove that away and blessed him. And so many such examples that we find in Mahaprabhu's pastimes that illustrate this point. So this is the first quality of Gauranga Mahaprabhu, which shows that he drives away material lamentation. The second quality of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Vishadaya. So first we discuss this one. Helo Dhuni Takhedaya, which means he drives away lamentation. Second, Vishadaya. I told you we cannot finish this verse. We are just one, uh, one adjective we have finished. So second is Vishadaya, which means he purifies everything. Gauranga Mahaprabhu is the best 
purification agent. He purifies everything. Anyone who comes in contact with Gauranga Mahaprabhu, for sure, anyone who comes in the current of Krishna consciousness will for sure be purified. It's only a matter of time. Some may be purified this lifetime, some may be purified next lifetime, some may be purified in 10 lifetimes. But purification 100% is guaranteed. The time frame is only based on our intensity. How fast we want to get purified. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we see in Mahaprabhu's pastimes, there is a personality by the name Subodhi Roy. And Subodhi Roy was a landlord, Zamindar. And under him, there was one Muslim person who was working. And of course, cutting the long story short, this Muslim person one time made a mistake and Subodhi Roy got so angry that he took a whip and he whipped him on his back. Hey, how did you make this mistake? So he whipped him on his back. And this Muslim person did not say anything. He just took it. And eventually when this Muslim person got married and he somehow rose in his position, he went on to become the famous Nawab Hussain Shah. And now Subhudi Rai was under him. Tables turned. Earlier Subhudi Rai was leading and this person was under. Now tables turned. Now Nawab Hussain Shah became the king. But he didn't have any grudge. He did not have any grudge against Subodhi Rai. Till the time we have grudge against devotees, we don't make advancement. Shripad Aindra Prabhu would say, till the time you have grudge, you don't get grudge. If you want grudge, let's not have grudge against devotees. But he didn't have any grudge. But his wife saw this, that on his back he has whip marks. So she inquired. And eventually, Nawab Hussain Shah explained that it was Subodhi Rai one time who whipped. So she got so angry that she brainwashed him and convinced him to go and change his religion. And you see in, in, in Islam, they have the holy water when sprinkled a couple of times. It's believed that a person is no longer the religion that he practices. So he, Nawab Hussain Shah took his holy water and went and sprinkled on the head of Subodhi Rai three times and here was Subodhi Rai, who was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associate. No more Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associate. Now he is Muslim, Muslim practicing Islam. And he didn't know what to do. So he ran to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He needed purification. He ran to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu gives him the ultimate form of purification. Cheto darpanam arjanam bhava maha davagni nirvapanam shreya kairava chandrika vitaranam vidhyava do jivanam anandam budivardanam pratipadam punam rataswadanam sarvatmasnapanam param vijayate shri krishna sankirtanam he gave him the chanting of the holy name how is sankirtan again it is param vijayate jayati sanskrit is a very interesting language Jayati means victory. Like for example, if two kings are fighting and if one king is victorious over another king, it is Jayati. But Mahaprabhu is not saying Jayati. He is saying Vijayati. Sarvatma Snapanam Vijayate. What does Vijaya mean? Oh, when one king is victorious over another king and he takes control of the another kingdom also, where he goes and sits on the throne of the other king and starts ruling that kingdom also. Oh, that is Vijaya. So, how is Harinam Prabhu? Not Jayati. It is victorious. But Harinam takes charge. And now is Vijaya because he comes and sits on the throne like mind and starts taking charge of all our senses. This is Vijaya. Not just victorious, but sits on our head, sits on our mind and takes charge of all our senses. Param Vijayate. Shri Krishna Sankirtana. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the chanting of the holy names to Subodhi Rai and Subodhi Rai goes to Brindavan Dham. Mahaprabhu tells him, to me jao Brindavan, go to Braj. He goes to Brindavan Dham, starts chanting the holy name, becomes so qualified and so purified that when Rupa Goswami came to Brindavan for the very first time, it was Subodhi Rai who took Rupa Goswami on a Braj Yatra. Why or how? By the power of chanting of the holy name. So what was the form of purification as outlined by Gauranga Mahaprabhu for Subodhi Rai? It was Sri Harinam Prabhu. One very famous achari in our Sampradaya is Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur. Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, before 
becoming Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur was his name was Hari Vallabh. And one time there was a controversy over Swakiya and Parakiya. So basically, in essence, not getting into much detail of that, Swakiya means where Krishna is married in Dwaraka, and Parakiya, which means paramour love. So there was a debate, there was a controversy where some people said that Swakiya is very great and it is higher than Parakiya. And Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur said, no, Mahaprabhu is preaching Parakiras. And he wrote many, many books to outline. And eventually the whole village started accepting that. Ah, seems like Parakiras is superior. Mahaprabhu is not just speaking. Um, he's not just firing blank bullets. He's, he's speaking some sense. And Vishwana Chakravarti is giving commentary. Why Mahaprabhu is glorifying Parakiras? Now Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur's fame started spreading because he proved the superiority supremacy of Parakiras over Swakiras. So there were few uh, decoits in the village. They did not like this. N not that they did not like the Swakiya Parakiya thing. They did not like that Vishwana Chakravarti became famous. Hmm? You see, fame is a very uh, very big hurdle in Krishna consciousness, if not properly managed. In fact, it's a curse. Hmm? if not properly managed. And now these decoids, they saw Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur and they made a plan. Tomorrow morning, when he does Braj Parikrama, we will kill him. And Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur's daily niyam was to do Braj Parikrama every day, 11 kilometers, every single day. Even till this date, we find so many sadhus in Vrindavan, every single day they do Braj Parikrama. Some even do three times a day. Some even do Govardhan Parikrama three times a day. There are sadhus like that also who do Govardhan Parikrama, which is about 21 kilometers, three times a day, which means 20, 40, 60, about 63, 64 kilometers every single day. That's a lot of walking. That's a lot of walking. Can the host... Thank you, Prabhuji. So we find... They made this plan and when he was next day morning, he was on his Braj Parikrama and they saw Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur from a distance. And of course, Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur knows this. He is Hari Parshad. He is Gaura Parshad. So these decoys were from a distance and they were seeing Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur. And as Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur was coming ahead, no longer they could see Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, but they saw a very young girl a Kishori, a very young girl. So these decoys went to her and said, Hey, wait a minute, Vishwana Chakravati was coming from here. Who are you? So she said, Oh, yeah, Vishwana Chakravati, I saw him. He went that direction. They said, Acha, but we didn't see. She said, Oh, it's probably early in the morning. It's still dark. That's why you didn't see. But I saw. I was here. So he went that side. So they said, But who are you? We stay in this village. We have not seen you. So she said, Well, I am a servant of Radharani. I am a young girl. I live in this village only. I am a, I am a servant of Srimati Radharani. So this decoy said, Acha. And where did you say Vishwanath went? They said, Oh, he went that way. So these decoids, they started going that way. And this girl started walking. And as this girl went a distance, the girl transformed to Vishwanath Chakravarti again. So Vishwanath Chakravarti took the form of his eternal Manjari Swarup to disguise these decoids and eventually after going a distance he again transformed and the decoids from a distance saw this and they fell at the feet of Vishwana Chakravati Thakur. Those who are decoids who are envious of Vishwana Chakravati Thakur now fell at his feet and were initiated by Vishwana Chakravati Thakur into the Sampradaya and eventually that led to their purification. So what to speak of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Mahaprabhu's servants are also so kind. Those who come to kill them, they are ready to uplift them and purify them completely. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes are given to this world only so that it results in our purification. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur had started a magazine called as Nadia Prakash. And it was a daily magazine. Imagine like the way you have New York Times or Times of India or Indian Express or whatever. So it comes every single day. Likewise, 
he had started for bhakti nadia prakash about chaitanya mahaprabhu every single day so one time one person came to maha to shila saraswati thakur and said well you are publishing about chaitanya mahaprabhu do you have that much content to publish every day is there so much content to publish every single day and shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur in a very funny way he just laughed it out and said what to speak of every day i can publish every minute every single minute i can publish a nadia prakash for your purification and for your upliftment but because you don't have taste for your benefit for your convenience i'm just doing it once a day otherwise in reality i can do it every single minute so there are so many instances so many past times of chaitanya mahaprabhu which when read can result in purification what to speak of past times dear devotees even one verse that we take from gaura leela is enough to inundate the heart and drive away material lamentation and also completely purify us chaitanya chandra leela agada gambhir pravesh karite nare sparshe rahitir chaitanya leela ratna sar ai swarupa ra vandar dila thoi ragana ter kanthe chaitanya leela agada gambhir it's a very dark or very deep ocean pravesh karite nare sparshe rahitir kaviraj goswami saying even i have no qualification to go inside this deep ocean sparshe rahitir i am just scratching the surface kaviraj goswami he is kaviraj he is saying i don't have adhikar to jump into the ocean of gaura leela so i am just scratching and when he scratches the surface that scratching results in 17 books of chaitanya charitamrita that is his scratching so you can imagine if he actually jumps into the ocean of gaura leela is going to be a magnum opus is going to be a magnum opus so there is so much that we can speak about chaitanya mahaprabhu but in the limited time that we have we just discussed these two adjectives glorifying chaitanya mahaprabhu first which says he drives away material lamentation and second vishadaya which means he purifies dear devotees before we end let us once again chant this verse which will result in our purification and hopefully it can drive our material lamentation also away and maybe in some time in the future we can discuss the other adjectives that swarup damodar goswami is using here to glorify shri gauranga mahaprabhu let us quickly chant this verse and end our discussion this is chaitanya charitamrita madhya leela chapter 10 text 119 he lo dhuni takhe daya vishadaya pron mila damodaya shamyakshast vivadaya rasadaya chitarpiton madaya shashvat bhakti vinodaya samadaya madhurya maryadaya shri chaitanya dayani detavadaya bhoyad amon modaya shri gauranga mahaprabhu ki jai shri krishna bhagavan ki jai shri vrindavan dham ki jai 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 shri radhe sham जय जय श्री राधे श्याम सबको मिले श्री वृंदावन धाम हरे कृष्ण शिला प्रभुपाद की जय देर आर टू ऑप्शन इधर वी कैन टेक क्वेश्चन और इन द सेम मीटर वी हैव शट गोस्वामी अष्टकम वी कैन ऑल्सो सिंग दैट इफ देर आर नॉट मच क्वेश्चन विच एवर वर्क आई थिंक देर इज वन क्वेश्चन केम अप फ्रॉम राष्ट्रपुरी he did uprad against his guru maharaj also how does the story end prabhu i mean how does the leela end what really happened to him 
was he forgiven by lord maha uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu as you were saying that you know his kid was also taken away so what really happened are krishna yes also uh, before i answer um, it was santri kor mata ji who instructed me at sadhu sangha to come to this forum and speak because it was it was quite some time so taking her instruction upon my head um i have come here and thank you mata ji and all the devotees also for engaging me in the service as far as ramchandra puri is concerned ramchandra puri was critical towards his guru maharaj chaitanya charitamrita explains when his guru maharaj was departing this world he was chanting a verse that radharani chanted at kurukshetra ai din dayar nata he mathura nata kadabya lokase when <laughs> shrimati radharani tells krishna that you are not that same krishna you have changed like often times of course i I've, i've heard generally in in after marriage the husbands or the wife they say oh before marriage you were different after marriage you have changed shaadi ke baad aap bahut badal gaye whatever the grahasthas may may know better so shrimati radharani looks at krishna and says you are not that same krishna ai deena daya da nata he mathura nata kadabya loka say you are you are not at vrindavan krishna i am looking for vrindavan krishna bangshi dhari who holds a flute who has peacock feather you don't have a peacock feather you don't have flute you're not coming to braj i want that krishna and shrimati radharani is in that lamentation she is crying and shedding tears and ramchandra puri's spiritual master hmm, is also crying in the same mood hmm, ishwara puri pad hmm. no madhavendra puri madhavendra puri right if madhavendra puri yes so madhavendra puri is also in the same mood crying um, in lamentation and at that point ramchandra puri comes there and says oh this is all so bogus you should not cry like this his guru maharaj was actually in tears of separation and he comes and uh, finds fault and criticizes but eventually sadhus are so kind they don't consider offenses while at the same time ramchandra puri was instructed by madhavendra puri so madhavendra puri then ishwara puri and the chaitanya mahaprabhu so madhavendra puri told his disciple ramachandra puri that you should go and associate with chaitanya mahaprabhu you should go and associate with him take his instructions be around with him and even though his spiritual master did not consider an offense he took it, he gave an instruction for his purification for his upliftment and ramachandra puri even though did not want to follow that instruction at that point he still heard it and eventually we find he was still critical he didn't even spare chaitanya mahaprabhu but eventually he started developing some affection for chaitanya mahaprabhu understanding that chaitanya mahaprabhu was someone who was crying day in and day out for jagannath ganga jamuna prayag narila dubai te prabhu dubai la krishna premera banyate chaitanya mahaprabhu was drowning the devotees of prayag ganga jamuna prayag narila dubai even ganga and yamuna could not drown people but chaitanya mahaprabhu was drowning and inundating people with krishna prem and ramchandra puri realized that after one point so he falls at the feet of chaitanya mahaprabhu and chaitanya mahaprabhu forgives him because that was the instruction even of madhavendra puri um so eventually he is forgiven but that uh, that takes good amount of time after a good amount of time he learns his mistake realizes what he has done wrong and then he is forgiven so mahaprabhu forgives him but it comes after lot of chastisement and lot of beating so intelligence is when we realize this quickly and stop criticizing devotees kahare na ninda kare krishna krishna bole ajay chaitanya sai jini beka hole chaitanya bhagavat brindavan das takur explains kahare na ninda kare krishna krishna bole one should not criticize anyone he did that she did that they did that human life is too short for any of this all we are concerned is what i am doing their guru maharaj will take care of them krishna will take care of them 
I am not their spiritual master. I am not their Siksha Guru either. It's none of my business to give a comment, especially when not asked. If I am being asked, I can say something. Praise in public and being critical in private, not the other way. If we even if you are serving a Siksha Guru for someone, we are always critical in private, not never in public. So not that we don't have to be critical sometimes. Uh, in the in if you are in a management position or if you are or siksha guru we may have to pinpoint just to make sure the functioning of the organization is much better but it's always done in private so vrindavan das takur says kahare na ninda kare krishna krishna bole don't criticize anyone and in that time instead use your tongue for chanting krishna krishna ajaya chaitanya sai jini beka hole this will give ultimate pleasure to chaitanya mahaprabhu we have time for criticism because we are not chanting the holy name chaitanya bhagavat says in that time that you are using for criticism use that time to add one round or one mantra hari krishna maha mantra when you start doing that there is no time for criticism we are finding time because there is no adequate amount of bhajan when bhajan is increased so much there is no time for criticism our point is we are increasing increasing criticism so much and bhajan is as it is so no we are not even making advancement and uh, that 16 rounds that we are doing for ages together or decades together we are still not able to taste the sweetness so this is the biggest obstacle a living entity faces in his advancement criti- being critical of devotees kahare na ninda kare krishna krishna bole don't ever criticize anyone and this is the fundamental teaching of chaitanya mahaprabhu fundamental teaching of prabhu pad fundamental teaching of our spiritual masters also to not being critical so yes long story short eventually he was forgiven by chaitanya mahaprabhu and the sampradaya hare krishna thank you prabhu that's good to hear because you know the chota hardas episode comes and for a long time you know i when i read chaitanya charitamrita I was so happy to hear the ending the way it ends it's so beautiful it's just so beautiful so i was thinking that this episode also have to have a a dayaful end you know with chaitanya mahaprabhu it cannot be otherwise so i just ask thank you so much right. he is dayanidhi in fact in chota haridas also um when chota haridas goes to meet madhavi devi madhavi devi is very old sister of shiki mahiti one of the three and a half confidential associates of gauranga mahaprabhu ramananda rai swaroop damodar shiki maiti and madhavi devi now she was about 80 years old so mahaprabhu will not chastise him so much because he is seeing an 80 year old she is very old and chota ridas is very young but because she was old she had a young servant at her place who was a girl and she was assisting so when chota ridas went to the house of a lady where there is a young girl pretty much of of the same age this infuriated goranga mahaprabhu not that he met madhavi devi she was very old uh, because madhavi devi is almost like grandmother so mahaprabhu will not be so rigid on principles mm-hmm. or with mother but because age was same and the girl who was serving madhavi devi was also young this infuriated mahaprabhu and of course later he was also forgiven thank you prabhu ji um there are few more questions here on the chat room as well um in the topic same topic um there's one devotee asking how we overcome the grudges against devotees so shastra explains we are um we have grudge or we have envy or we have jealousy with devotees and primarily we see this these qualities grudge envy jealousy pride is there with people um, who are doing the service exactly similar to the service that i am doing for example a mridanga player is envious of another mridanga player he is not envious of a pujari a pujari is envious of another pujari he is not envious of a preacher a pre- preacher may be envious of another preacher but he is not envious of a cook a cook is envious of another cook but he may not be envious of a kirtaniya a kirtaniya may be envious of another kirtaniya but he may not be envious of someone who is there in the temple management and so on and so forth so envy jealousy pride etc these qualities these anarthas are primarily seen in devotee community when two people of the same services are found but 
the ultimate solution, whichever anartha we take, Shastra is very clear. Whichever anartha we take, the ultimate solution, the ultimate form of purification, we are talking about grudge. We are talking about purification. The ultimate form of purification we saw in Subodhi Raya also. And there are so many other pastimes. Even in when Mahabrabhu was traveling in the boat with some of his associates, there were the Pathan soldiers who invaded. And uh, Mahaprabhu at that time got um, seizure. So he was foaming. And these Pathan soldiers thought that Mahaprabhu's associates have done something to him. And long story short, they wanted to chastise the associates. And eventually, Mahaprabhu forgives them. And these Pathan soldiers are purified. But how are they purified? Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Subodhi Rai is purified. How? Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And so many examples that way. In Kali, the only means of purification, the only means of clearing Anarthas is chanting. There is no other way. There is no other way. And there will be no other way. For the next 427,000 years devotees, dear devotees, there is going to be no other way. We, we would have heard this many, many times. But if we just pause and think, there is no other way except the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. In one morning walk, Prabhupada, <laughs> Prabhupada says, why 25 rounds? Why not 25,000 rounds? If ever you get time, chant. 16 rounds, dear devotees, is very bare minimum. It is very basic. So Chinnan Maharaj often says in his seminar, he says, real chanting starts from the 17th round. 16 rounds you do because you have to. 17th you do because you want to. There is a difference between you have to and you want to. And last week, in fact, last Sunday, three days back, today is Wednesday, His Grace Kanai Thakur Prabhu is one of the brahmacharis from Pune. He is here. So he will be serving class in another 30-40 minutes. So I will have to go to the temple. So he did a Japa camp uh, on Sunday. And uh, that Japa camp was from morning 9 o'clock to evening 4 o'clock, straight, no break. Devotees, of course, can go and have prasadam, but he was sitting straight and chanting. And so many people came and chanted 64 rounds, 80 rounds. Uh, newcomers who had not even chanted one round, there was one person who had, in his, in his whole Krishna consciousness, his highest number was one round. He had never chanted more than that. He chanted 46 rounds that day. And so many chanted that, like that. But one reflection which all the people had was, the struggle was there for the first 25 rounds. Legs are paining, hand is paining, looking here and there, a Microsoft Teams message, email message, this person is messaging WhatsApp, this Instagram, uh, project deadlines, whatever. But after 25 rounds, it is normally seen that it becomes easier. From 25 to whatever the next Sankhya is, it becomes easy. The catch is the first 25 rounds. It is experiential, devo dear devotees. The first 25 rounds will be a big challenge. It will be a big burden, so to say. But after that, it becomes very easy. And Prabhupada says this, that the more devotees chant more rounds, their speed also increases. This is a Prabhupada's quotation. We will find this in Veda base. The more devotees chant a bigger number, their speed increases. And naturally, one is able to chant. So what we do is we say, oh, 16 rounds, 2 hours, which means... If you have to do 32 rounds, which means that will be 4 hours, which means 48 means 6 hours, which means 64 means 8 hours. Or 8 hours I don't have. Prabhuji, I have IT work. I cannot morning I go to office and then I come back, school, I don't have that much time. But bhakti doesn't work in material calculation, dear devotees. Prabhupada clearly says this, when you chant more on a constant basis, the speed increases. Why? Because Krishna is dancing on the tongue. And Krishna can dance slow. And Krishna can also dance fast. So the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is like the Ras Mandal, 108 beats. Krishna is there on the top. They are the 108 gopis. And how do you know Krishna is there on the top? You see there is a peacock feather on that Krishna bead. So that's like Krishna and he is having a peacock feather. And then you have the 108 beads, which is the Braja gopis. So it's like a Rasa Mandal. You, Krishna is dancing from one gopi to another gopi. So in that we find that When this chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is done with a very sincere heart, I was about to make a point. I just lost track. I don't know why. 
So anyway, this chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, when it is done with a very sincere heart, yes, we were talking about the big number. When we chant more than 16, Prabhupada said minimum 16. When we start chanting more than 16, it can just be 17 to start off with. It can be 18 to start off with. We promise to our Gurudev minimum 16. We don't say maximum 16. And so many initiations we find when the disciple, aspiring disciple says 16 rounds, the Guru will stop and say minimum 16. So this is Prabhupada's mood. This is Mahaprabhu's mood. And when we start chanting more, eventually the speed will increase and slowly we will, we will see Anartha start going away. Whether it is uh, lust, anger, greed, envy, pride. This is not what I am saying. This is Shastra saying. It's not that I have realized it. I am also pretty much in the same boat. But Shastra time and again emphasizes this. Those who constantly take shelter of Harinam Prabhu. Because this is the only way. This is the only way. You go to sadhus, sadhus are going to take ask you to take shelter of Harinam. Because this is the dharma for this age. No other dharma will result in purification. As much purification as the Yuka dharma that is Harinam Sankirtan. So Nam Japa and Nam Sankirtan. As much shelter as possible. Then sky is the limit. Eventually, there will be purification. 100%. Every minute, every second, every nanosecond that we have, the tongue ideally should be chanting. Prabhupada Siksha Guru, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj, in whose, uh, who was Prabhupada Siksha Guru, when Prabhupada, in fact, was a Grahastha, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj would come to his house and he would preach to him. And eventually, Prabhupada started getting inspired. He would have this habit. In recordings also we find in his, in his class recordings. Whenever he would have little time in the recording, you can find his tongue is vibrating. He keeps saying, Nitai Gaurahari, Nitai Gaurahari, Nitai Gaurahari. Small, small, one minute, 30 seconds, 20 seconds. Every minute that we have should be used in chanting Krishna Nam and Gaura Nam. Gaura Nam, Gaura Dham, Gaura Rupa Gun, Aparada Nahi Mani Tarite Nipun. Kaviraj Goswami says, these four things don't consider Aparada, no offense. Gaura Dham, Gaura Nam, Gaura Dham, Gaura Rupa Gun. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's name, his pastime plays Navadvi, his qualities and his form. Aparada Nahimani Tarite Nipun. They don't consider offenses and they're expert in delivering. So Krishna Nam coupled with Gaura Nam results in fast purification and grudge, anger, envy, lust, pride, all these anarthas are also completely eradicated. So Hari Nam is the only way. Kalau Nasti Yaiva. Nasti eva, nasti eva kathiranyata. There is no other way, no other way. There will be no other way. We can make a necklace out of the source and tie it on our neck and remember it for life. There will be no other way except Sri Hari Nam Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. <clears throat> There's one another question if you have time. Uh, looks like a short question. Uh, this Prabhuji is asking, it's a little off topic, looks like. Uh, he's asking um, Najar about the Najar, like Mother Yashoda. She's afraid of uh, the Najar, uh, of uh, Lala's Najar. And Putna is coming and she's all the time afraid of Najar. So um, what is the meaning of that? Do we believe it in our devotee circle? So... Till the time one is not purified, I remember I had asked this question to Sri Pad Mukundatta Prabhu. And he is he's very pandit, very scholarly. So this was in 2018 Sadhu Sangha. Um, I got some time, so I was in his room. Uh, so I asked him some questions. Is astrology important for devotees? Does this nazar, nazar or evil eye work and so on and so forth? So he had mentioned that till the time one is not purified till the time one is not chanting the pure name the planets will act these planets will act nazar or evil eye to some extent will work because the jiva is still conditioned and bhakti is not there on the highest platform either when bhakti is there on the highest platform then these things don't work graha nakshatra devi devata none of these things work but if the chanting is filled with aparad and bhakti is also not pure devotional service. And then planets, that is astrology or nazar, to some extent work. Not completely because Krishna is always there as a shield. But this nazar also that we see, it is Krishna only who is playing it in our life. Because there is some karmic reaction that has to come back to us. 
and krishna is working as an instrument in that person's life and inspiring him that you do evil eye upon this person so it is krishna who is playing on both sides the nazar that we are getting it is krishna only who is doing krishna loves to create some spark some rift between two devotees and then he will like to see ab kya karoge he like to see and so many examples that way radharani and chandra were the best among devotees transcendental rival and krishna doesn't go to convince that oh you come to one camp he enjoys that he enjoys diversity he enjoys that flavor even devotee circles also we may find apparent fights may be there krishna loves that it is krishna who is doing it krishna is acting as an instrument and inspiring that person in the heart is insan ko jaake ye bol and now you say this ha now then krishna will see now let me see what you are doing so it is not the other person who is doing it is our karmic reaction that is coming back to us and krishna is acting as an instrument krishna is inspiring him it is our thing we are destined for it and he is just acting as an instrument for example if tomorrow we fall down to the ground uh, and a stone hits our hand and our hand gets fractured will we go and criticize the stone no it had to come to me it came whether i am walking in uh, washington state whether i am walking in seattle whether i am walking in new jersey or whether i am walking in jersey city or journal square or whatever i am just remembering the places uh, whether any of those places if something has to come to me it will come if even if i change places in india america it will come we don't criticize the ground we don't criticize the rock it had to come it will come likewise whatever is coming to us it is not people who are responsible it is my karma that, that is coming back to me and krishna is using that devotee as an instrument to teach me a lesson just like we don't criticize a stone we don't go and slap a stone hey why did you do this to me we understand that it doesn't make sense it's my mistake and it is coming back to me likewise this nazar or astrology or whatever it is coming back to me because it is there in my karma karma is like a boomerang it will come back it will come back in the form of different devotees and in the corporate world it might come back in the form of those who are upcoming devotees or non devotees but it will come back so they are not responsible it is my karma that is coming back to me so to so shri pad mukundata prabhu said to some extent it will work because we are not practicing pure devotion service but when one is chanting shuddha naam pure name and one is actually practicing pure devotion service anya bilashitam shunyam when this verse is being practiced actually then he said then astrology nazar and all these things don't work but till that time jiva is conditioned for his purification it acts so krishna sends these different purification agents in the form of planets and nazar etc so that jiva is purified and once the jiva is purified when no, now no no more need of purification so now naturally planets don't act planets give you away now you you are all set to go back to krishna so people around or planets or nazar is only for our purification and it is krishna who is acting through them we are getting what we get what we sow so we have sown something like that in our previous lives and krishna through that devotee is giving back to us whether it is astrology or whether it is evil eye or nazar as they say in hindi hare krishna thank you prabhu that's a beautiful answer and i hope that devotees liked it um 